Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, I just came back from a very nice and relaxing uh, one week vacation with the family. And when I returned, I thought I would share with you some of uh, the tips that I have for uh, preparing my tank for uh, going on vacation. All right, so here it goes. The first kind of big bit of advice is don't do everything the day before you leave. Uh, you want to prepare for the vacation well in advance and often you try to do things last minute you know yeah. plug in this or or put this piece of equipment online or text something new right before you leave to the airport and often something horrible happens and you're delayed so my my best my number one number one bit of advice is uh, prepare ahead so uh, you wanna you wanna think about how long you're gonna leave for and plan accordingly and uh, you obviously have to know your tank you have to know how much water fresh water consumes you got to figure out how, how much you're dosing and and all the containers so uh, you have to have a good handle on your tank before you leave you wanna uh, make sure that if you're gonna get uh, tank sitters uh, that they're all trained up on what they need to do it's helpful to make them videos so I actually make videos on how I uh, replace my water reservoir or clean the skimmer or how to restart my apex controller in case of a, uh, an emergency uh, and have uh, one or two or three people uh, that are trained up on this that uh, you could call uh, up and, and ask uh, for help if, if something happens. Uh, the first thing that you need to think about is uh, before you leave uh, is how much how, how much water your tank is going to consume and whether your current ATO reservoir is going to be enough. Uh, if I'm going to be going for a couple of days, I, I use this. Uh, if I'm going for a week, I use this and I fill it up. Now what you want to do is you want to set it up two days or three days before you go away. So that way you make sure that uh, it's hooked up correctly and, and all of that good stuff. And you just want to top it off, top off the, the reservoir the day before you leave. So you prepare your uh, top off uh, container two days or a day or three days before you leave. Uh, and then the day of you just top it off. Think about that uh, if you're going to use a different container that you're not used to. Uh, make sure that the level of the, te of the water in your uh, uh, container is lower than the hose that's feeding the thing. So that way you don't backside it. Uh, when I'm away, I set my auto feeder to feed three times a day, uh, morning, afternoon, uh, morning, noon, and, uh, and evening. Uh, I do add this uh, homemade feeding station. It's just a, a, a container, a plastic container that I kind of sawed in half. And that allows the, the fish a little bit more time to access the pellets that are just trapped over here. Uh, before you leave, make sure that, uh, again, not, not the day of, but two or three days, ideally before, that uh, you're, you have enough food in the container and check the battery, make sure it works. I typically put this on three days before. I mean, it's always on, but I, but I set it up to feed my fish three days before I leave. So that way I know that it's working and, and there is no issue with it. This is uh, an external power supply for my Ecotech uh, uh, controller. So if uh, the power goes up, this puppy is gonna power my uh, uh, is going to power my Ecotec Vortex and, and keep the water ox uh, oxygenated. So uh, ha have a solution. Ha have a solution for a possible power outage. Another thing that you need to do two or three days before you leave is make sure that whatever you're dosing, that there's going to be enough liquid in your dosing containers that are going to carry carry through the vacation. So figure out what uh, how much you dose, what's the consumption per day and make sure that you have enough buffer uh, uh, and solutions to last you through the vacation and ideally uh, a week or two longer. So I, I typically refill all of these bottles when I go on vacation. Make sure you change your filter socks a couple of days or a day before you leave. So I uh, my filter socks here, I change them up the day before I leave. Uh, it's a bad idea to change them on the day that you leave because sometimes if you put a fresh uh, sock on 
uh, it will make the skimmer uh, overflow and you don't want your skimmer overflowing when you're away. So change the socks a day or two before you leave. Okay, uh, next thing is skimmer. Uh, make sure you clean the cup before the day before you leave, not uh, on the day that you're leaving. And very important, uh, when you leave, put a Ziploc bag or a bag over your sock, over your skimmer, so that way if it does overflow where you're away, uh, the water doesn't splash everywhere and it just goes back down into the sock. One thing that I do a day before uh, leaving on vacation is uh, if, if you have a controller like the Apex, uh, and the, you know these are great little units, they monitor and allow you to control a lot of uh, your equipment, but they rely on a connection to your internet and sometimes that connection goes down, uh, leaving you unable to control or monitor your tank. Um, if you're running on wireless, the, the new Apex has a lot of issues with uh, dropping wireless signals. So what I do as a precaution is I connect uh, an Ethernet wire from the Apex and I run it all the way to my uh, 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 modem. It looks pretty ugly, but I like having that safety net. Uh, if, if the wireless connection drops, you can reset it, but you need somebody to go in with a little pin and press a reset button in there it's very it's very hard to get to and and you're uh, the person who's uh, keeping your tank while you're away is not likely going to be able to do this and you know it's a mess over there but if you have a connection with an ethernet then a lot of the times that it, it will reconnect itself or worst case scenario somebody just needs to to unplug the ethernet from the modem and replug uh, the, the ethernet cable from the modem and replug it again and voila you're back uh, you're back in action One important bit of equipment that I think you need if you're gonna leave your tank is uh, for vacation is a Wi-Fi camera. This is just a very cheap uh, camera that I picked up and it's plugged, it's not plugged to the Apex, it's plugged on uh, an external power, uh, sorry, on a different power supply and uh, I could access this from my phone to check on the tank. The reason that I haven't plugged this to my Apex is if the Apex uh, fails, then I want to be able to still look at the tank and see if uh, anything is going wrong. This uh, one little uh, tip that I have is uh, uh, take pictures of your tank uh, every day or twice a day. That's important because uh, you know it, it lets you monitor things like how fast your skimmer is filling up, and also if if there's anything weird that happens in the tank, you could possibly by looking back at the picture, figure out when, when, you know, when a coral died, or when a fish died, or, or when, uh, when something happened. Test your water chemistry for the core parameters. To me, that is going to be alkalinity, nitrates, and, um, and calcium. And I'll tell you why I do that in a second, but it's very important to kind of get an idea of what the water chemistry before you go on vacation, because sometimes vacations uh, can alter your water chemistry. Uh, it could alter your water chemistry if, let's say, you're feeding too much or too little. You know, mostly, most of the time, it's too much. The auto feeder will dump more food than necessary. Then you might get a, a, a spike in nitrates or phosphates, so you want to know that. Uh, and in a special case, in, in homes that trap CO2, uh, your alkalinity is going to change. And it's good, it's good to know what you started with. And, and I'll talk more about that in a second. One last consideration that uh, you should think of before you leave is how is your absence from the home going to affect the pH of your tank? Okay, so very quick chemistry lesson. Houses that are uh, closed and uh, uh, they're well insulated. Uh, the CO2, the carbon dioxide in the house, is going to be a lot higher than uh, uh, the CO2 levels in ambient air. Now, this causes a problem for your tank because it actually uh, lowers the pH in your uh, water, uh, in your reef tank. Uh, the carbon dioxide in the air is going to diffuse into the water, 
and turn into carbonic acid and that's going to increase uh, proton levels and that will uh, reduce uh, your pH. So uh, when I'm around, when my family is at home, uh, the typical pH of the tank uh, goes uh, ranges between, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you can see here in the daytime, it's like 8.2 and at night time it goes to you know 8.14 or sometimes 8 sometimes uh, 7.9 so uh, th these uh, three days here from uh, August 24th to August 26th that's uh, the pH the typical pH in my tank uh, when our family's at home now as soon as we go on vacation so we left for vacation on the morning of the 26th you see immediately the pH of the tank increased it increased by about an average of, uh, of 0.1. So now uh, the highs are 8.3. They used to be 8.2, but the highs are 8.3. And then the lows are 8.2. So the average is actually 8.25. Now, this increase in, uh, in pH uh, is going to affect the rate at which corals calcify and the rate at which alkalinity is maintained in your aquarium. So to give you an example, uh, I typically dose 15 mils of alkalinity per day to keep my level stable. So this is a measurement of alkalinity. Uh, a day before I went on vacation, it's, uh, uh, let's see, it's 9.3. And the morning that I left on vacation, I measured it again, and it was 9.3. So it's, it's been stable. Uh, so now what happens when you leave is the corals are gonna take up alkalinity at a faster rate, but your doser, if you leave it set the same, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be supplying uh, essentially the same amount of alkalinity, uh, assuming a lower pH, and that will in turn drop your alkalinity in the tank uh, over time. And obviously, it will depend on how much SPS corals and what the alkalinity demands are. Uh, so what I do uh, as as a kind of a uh, a, a way to reduce the reduction in alkalinity because of the higher pH when we're away is I actually double the dosage of my uh, alkalinity uh, buffer. So instead of uh, dosing 15 mils per day as I would when I when we're at home, I dose 30 mils per day. And I'll I'll show you here what happens to the alkalinity. So remember, alkalinity started at uh, before on vacation. It, uh, it was started at 9.3, and then I always test, uh, we came back, I think, on uh, September 1st. So you can see here, uh, this is the day that we left. Alkalinity is 9.3, and remember, I doubled my dosage of uh, alkalinity buffer when I, was, uh, when I was away, but that still reduced the alkalinity declined to... Uh, yeah, what is it here? Let's see. I think it's 7.6, 7.85. So despite me doubling the dosage of uh, alkalinity buffer, my alkalinity dropped from 9.3 to 7.85 over uh, a week of vacation. Now imagine uh, how much more it would have dropped if I had kept my dosing schedule the same as we, if we were in the house. So uh, just something that you should think of. Uh, I you know don't don't take the the levels that I'm showing you here and and simply duplicate it. Obviously your tank is going to be different than my tank, and you should uh, uh, you should be mindful of this. Uh, I suggest that you actually do this test uh, for your own uh, you know uh, leave your house for a couple of days and figure out how much your alkalinity is going to drop if you uh, if you maintain like typical dosing levels and then uh, work up how much more you need to increase your alkalinity dosing to compensate for the fact that your pH is gonna increase when you're away. Well, thanks so much. Uh, if you have any comments or other suggestions for, uh, for how to prepare your uh, tank for vacation, uh, please let me know through the comment box below. And uh, yeah, enjoy your tank and enjoy your time away.